the scenes unfolding inside the intensive care unit at Scarborough General Hospital can be tough to watch, as nearly every bed is now taken. Can I get another IV pump? Life here is incredibly fragile, even for the vaccinated. This COVID patient in his 60s suddenly started gasping for air. Dr. Martin Betts is the medical director of critical care for the Scarborough Health Network. He says this patient had been talking and stable for days. Now he needed to be intubated. Um, it's a real challenge to be able to describe what you just saw. It's difficult for people to appreciate uh, really the severity of the, the illnesses these people are suffering from and the intensity of the interventions. It's a scene that's playing out in ICUs across the country. Exhausted and short-staffed, healthcare workers are struggling to save every life they possibly can. Beth says none of the patients here have had third doses, and roughly 75% are unvaccinated. One disturbing trend that, that we've seen is um, relatively elderly patients that may be in the community getting advice from their kids and, and middle-aged where you know, they may have strong views against the vaccine for themselves, but I think the risk equation for their elderly parents is actually different. On top of that, some hospitals are now running out of potentially life-saving drugs for COVID patients, forcing doctors here to use a lottery system. When you have six patients that need a life-saving medication and you have to choose one or two, that's a huge burden to carry. And this takes some of that away and makes sure it's a fair system. It's an ethical the scenario where like perhaps lotteries are, are probably the only fair way instead of picking who might survive. Hospitals have been sharing supplies of two arthritis drugs in particular. Pharmacists say those medications have been shown to save about one in every 20 patients by reducing inflammation. Toclizumab was the primary choice. It's the one with the best evidence. And as its shortages ran low, we started using the other drug. And then that impacted its supply because it wasn't ready for that increase in demand either. One, two, three. While hunting for new medications, healthcare workers are routinely turning COVID patients face down. Labor intensive, but it can help lung function. Romeo Reyes spends several hours a day face down in his bed. Uh. <laughs> At 80 years old, he was double vaccinated, but caught COVID during the holidays. Now he's in a medically induced coma. I'm really grateful for the, uh, the doctors and the staff. His daughter checks in every day, hoping for good news. We just want to see things start to turn the corner and start to improve, and, and we're hopeful and optimistic. It's just, uh, it's just ahead of us a little bit. So, Christine, the, the two patients in your story, any idea of how they're doing now? We just got in touch with Scarborough General, and thankfully we can report that both of those patients are currently in stable condition, still on ventilators, still fighting for their lives, but in stable condition. Okay, so, so we see numbers, the medical staff see the reality on the ground. What is the sense you're getting from them about you know, where this might be going next? You know, I asked them about their biggest fear and greatest hope at this point. Their biggest fear is that another variant is coming. But their greatest hope is that we are at or very close to the peak in this wave. And every healthcare worker I spoke with inside that ICU said they are giving their patients everything they have left. They're doing their best to take care of people, and they hope all Canadians will do the same. All right, Christine, thanks to you and the team. Christine Birak in Toronto tonight.